Today is November 11, 2019, and I am Lynn Simpson, and along with me is Tanya Fincham. We're with Oklahoma State University, and today we are at the campus of Langston University, Oklahoma City, to visit with Florence Jones of Florence's Restaurant in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. This is for our Bowley, Oklahoma Oral History Project. Thank you so much for agreeing to speak with us and let us begin. What is your full name? Florence Jones Kemp. When and where were you born? I was born in Bowley, Oklahoma. Will you, will you tell us when? Mm -hmm. The third, the fifth, and 31. Okay, thank March you. March 5th. March 5th, 1930. Thank you. Um, could I talk to you a little about your youth and where you grew up? Where you grew up? Well, I grew up in Bowdoin. I think I left Bowdoin when I was in about the seventh grade. And I can remember my first day at school, which uh, uh, the principal's name was Mr. Hill and his wife <coughs> was Miss Hill and she was the first grade teacher. And I remember the first day I went, she hugged me so tight until I thought I couldn't breathe because she had taught the rest of the, my siblings before me. And she was so happy to have me. <laughs> <laughs> so she knew you. She knew the, yeah, the rest of them, yes. Nice. Um, could you talk about your family? Well, it was five of us. Uh, I have an older brother named Curtis that passed away. And then I had a sister and a brother that was twins, Loreen and uh, Leonard. And then came me. <laughs> the surprise. Um, could you talk to us about your parents? Well, my father's name was Robert Jones and my mother was Elizabeth. And I was there, both of his eyes. I could do no wrong. He would just adore me. He didn't let anyone whoop. My mama couldn't whoop me. My sisters couldn't hit me. Nobody could mess with me. And I don't know why. <laughs> I understand. Um, let me get in here. And there were five of you? There was five was of us. the fifth one? Well, uh, my sister was born after me, uh, Onita Lewis okay. Jones. She uh, was born in Bowley two years after I was born. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Um, were your parents from Bowley? No, they were from, uh, well, I don't really know. They were from Vernon, Oklahoma in the beginning. And then, I don't know where they were from before then. Could you talk to us about um, your educational background? Well, <clears throat> When I left Bowley, I came here and I went to Douglas High School and uh, graduated in 50 from Douglas High School. Okay. Um, who were your role models growing up? Well, mostly my mother, because uh, I followed her around in the kitchen all the time. And I had to do everything in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> At that time, we had cows and we'd get butter and I had to churn the butter with the churner and I hated it. <laughs> but do you miss it now? Having I do. Fresh I, butter? I <laughs> do. I do. At that time everything was fresh and we went to the garden and got this and tomatoes and onions and okra we grew and corn and everything and now we have to buy that and it's not near as good. <laughs> yeah, the, taste, the taste. Yes. Did, did you taste. raise chickens? Yes, we had lots of chickens and some ducks. And my mom tried to raise some geese, but they didn't turn out so well. And then we had some guineas, but they would run off. But they would come back maybe after a week or two. I had no idea they could do that. Yes, and my mother used to make guinea dumplings, and they were the best dumplings I ever had. She said to get it dumplings was better. 
I mean, do you do you make dumplings now? I do, not guinea. <laughs> <laughs> you can't get guinea. Um, what did you admire so much about your mother? Well, she was a hard worker, and uh, she, well, we didn't have uh, money and stuff, so she would sell butter and eggs to buy us little things that we needed, like shoes and things. And I remember I was in a uh, a program at school, and I was I had to have some white boots. And so she ordered me these boots out of Montgomery Ward catalog. And I was so disappointed because they didn't get there in time for the program. But oh. then she had bought me some cute little red shoes and I wore those. And <laughs> I was telling the teacher, she said, well, why don't you worry about the boots? She said, you have these cute little shoes. <laughs> <laughs> understand that. Um, what brought your family to Bowie? I don't know. I really don't know. I don't. I don't know why I never asked. But I guess they was uh, venturing out from burning a. Uh, what was that little town that my daddy used to be at? Or they used to call, uh, switch Hamilton. Hamilton switch. switch. Oh, okay. The name Hamilton Switch. He was there for I guess a while, and I guess he moved from there to Bowley. He was. He was born there. He was an infant. Okay. Okay. Um, how did you decide to move to Oklahoma City? Well, my mom and my daddy separated. She came to Oklahoma City to work, and we stayed in Bodie and me. And my sister and my brother stayed with my dad in Bodie. And after a while, I just you were coming for the summer. Coming, I was going to visit her for the summer, and. Uh, some kind of way it turned into staying with my mom <laughs> because I guess I missed her so much. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and what kind of work did she do when she came in? And when she first came in, she worked for a place called New Way Laundry. New Way Laundry. And uh, we worked there for a long time. And then I remember that she moved to uh, Oklahoma Furniture and uh, Oklahoma Furniture Company. And she worked there until they moved to Burnham. They moved to uh, Gersory, Oklahoma. They moved to Gersory, Oklahoma, and she would uh, travel by a car. Her and I think about four of them would drive from Oklahoma City to Burnham. I mean, to, Burnham to, to Gersory every day. And, uh, and at that time, I was in high school, and I would have to come home from school and put on the dinner. Uh, so we lived from paycheck, from her paycheck to paycheck. You know, I don't know, you don't probably know anything about that. But, <laughs> and so I'd have to, she'd tell me, put on the neck bones or put on the beans, or put on whatever we were going to have that evening, you know, for dinner. I, I understand. My in-laws, a lot of my in-laws work for Oklahoma Furniture Company. Oh, really? That's the, that's the place. Yeah, right. Because okay. I went to high school in Guthrie. Um, how did you realize that Cooking for your family was going to become your passion. I did cooking for other people. I didn't ever really thought I would, but I always thought I'd be a seamstress because I sold real well. And in high school, in the high, I used to uh, my uh, my sewing teacher was Miss Love. I can't remember what she got married. She married into Miss Love, but I was so. Well, the first thing we ever made was a pair of pajamas. <laughs> and so we went from pajamas to this, and I sewed real well, so she would uh, buy material. I mean, well, my mother could only afford to buy so much material for me to sew, and so she would uh, buy material and let me make her grandkids little dresses. And it went from there to um, a Miss Ricks, which was my homemade homeroom teacher. She had some grandkids, so she would bring material and I'd make them dresses. So I always thought I'd just be a seamstress. And even though, and I made dresses, and I didn't have a machine, a sewing machine at that time. And my mom, I made a dress by hand, 
and I made the stitches so small you couldn't tell that it wasn't the machine. And so my mom told me, she said, when I can, I'm going to buy you a machine. And she bought me a machine. And I made lots of things. And so I always thought I'd be a seamstress. <laughs> do, do you still sew? No, not well. I make them. I make some quilts sometimes, but I don't now. I don't so much now. Okay. Was the sewing machine a trendle? Yeah, it was one of those. Uh, Pumpy kind of. Yeah, one of those. Uh, you know, you mash and it would go. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Those are neat. And I think I, I may still have that machine. <laughs> would you have patterns or make your own? Well, I made. Sometimes I made my own. I made my own. And I made a, oh, I remember I, after I met her father, I made a dress that we were going to a fair, and it was the dress of the ball. Really? Mm -hmm. describe, can you describe it for us? Yeah, it was black, and, and uh, I had saw it in a magazine, and so I copied it from the magazine. From so you the, didn't have a pattern? You no, just did no, it. I just saw it, and then it had a, it was black, and it had some little red, like uh, berries or something all over it. And I couldn't find that material, so I found the black material, and me and my mom embroidered those little black deals all over it. And in the back, it had a great big bow down at the back, that streamed down the back. Wow. And everybody was wondering, oh, where'd she get that from? <laughs> wow. I'd love to see a picture. You I have, have I dress. have. I, I think. still it have. It used to be my favorite dress up when I was playing dress up. I do. I still have that dress, and I have a picture of me in that dress, <laughs> which I could not get my leg in it now. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. Um, what do you remember most about your mother's kitchen, and how do you use some of those things? Well, I now? remember that we had a. But it was a wood stove in the kitchen, in the country, where you put the wood in, mm -hmm. and we baked uh, this, you know, you have to put it fired up to get it going. And I remember when we have a uh, baked sweet potatoes, there was a little grade down under that that you'd put it down on the band. You, you put the sweet potatoes under the ashes, and they baked down there under the ashes. Oh, and they were the sweetest potatoes. Oh. Not like these potatoes we have now, no sugar at all in them. I don't know what they do with potatoes now. They pick them before they're ripe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what I think. Um, so what from your mother's kitchen do you see those elements in your kitchen at home or even in your restaurant? Oh, I do a lot of things that she used to do and I see uh, things from like Martha Stewart and stuff, and they were doing that. And I said, well, my mother was doing that in the country. <laughs> you know how they go around and make the little pie things. And, and, oh, yeah. and I said, we used to do that in the country. Yeah. Nice. And the iron skillets. The big, yeah, we had the big iron skillets. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you still use those now, don't you? Yes, we used to have uh, cast iron skillets now. Yeah. Everybody used them. Even on, uh, they said they the best skillets now. <laughs> They're just heavy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They have, in fact, the ones we have now is getting too heavy for me to lift. I have to call somebody to come pick them up. <laughs> mm -hmm. But with, with five children, did your mother can a lot? Yes, she canned a lot. And oh my, I was the one that had to sift the coin for her to can the coin, and then we have to get the little silk out of the coin. And I hate that because I have to get every one of them out of there. And then she, we would all, she would always have trouble canning okra. We would try to can the okra, and then she see it, and it would start bubbling. And she said, "This is spoiling," you know. I don't know why she we could we could never hardly get that uh, okra together. Wow. Did she have a and, pressure cooker? Yes, we finally got a pressure cooker. And then we would make jelly, and had they had big berries down by the little water stream, and we'd have berries and apples when it was apple time, and did, did and you, then they would make some wine out of the great wine. It was <laughs> it wasn't nothing but juice when I was drinking it. <laughs> 
Did she pickle the okra, or how did you get it? No, them? I don't know. She she would. Uh, I wasn't pickled. Probably that's why we couldn't get it right. It wasn't pickled. It was uh, she put it in the jar and I think pour hot water or something on it and blanch it and try to do it like that. Mm -hmm. okay. um, when you first started uh, the restaurant, what were the major challenges you had? Oh, I was uh, a friend of mine said I had two chickens and a prayer, and uh, <laughs> I just made it work and <laughs> and uh, just made kept getting the other two chickens and kept on going until it got <laughs> up to now. I can't remember how many we would probably cook today. Yeah, I've eaten a few there myself. Did you have to get a loan to get started? No, when I was uh, when I finished high school, my aunt who was living in California, and she came here one summer, and I went to get back to California with her, and my cousin named Mildred, and uh, I, I, I my cousin had a a little old restaurant, little where he had a a building, shoot, and in the front of it was the restaurant where they sold a little food, and then they had a pool hall in the center, and in the back they had a little room that he gambled in. And they would pay me to come and work in the restaurant. And I saved my money. So when I came back here, I had money to open up the restaurant. And I went to, uh, down on California Street then, and they had secondhand places, so I went and got me a secondhand stove, secondhand table and all of that kind of stuff. So I had my I had a little money to uh, start my own business. Mm -hmm. Wow. What were some of your early menu items? Mostly chicken. Mostly chicken. Chicken and uh, uh, smothered steak and short ribs, which you can't buy now. They're so expensive. And at that time, they were real reasonable. Hamburgers, hot dogs. We used to sell so many hot dogs in Chile. Terribly have bonds just stacked up to the thing. They wasn't but about, I think the hamburgers was about 25 cents and the hot dogs was 15 or something like that. Did you have better times of the year? Did people come more during football season? You no, know, you know, I, I don't understand it, but my business, about the second or third day, it started out wonderful. Just people come in with a little bitty building. It had one little bitty uh, counter, and I think it had one table, and it had a window that you could hand stuff out the window. Mm -hmm. Most of your customers, males or females, or a mix? Both, Both. a mix. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. and then I had a bunch of uh, guys, like they worked, and they didn't have money, and they would eat and pay me up when they got paid. Mm -hmm. You floated them alone. Uh huh. And I have one of them that still comes to see me now. That comes to eat with me now. Named Roger Dodger. <laughs> we call him Roger. Loyal, loyal following. Mm -hmm. um, did you have a favorite dish then? I guess chicken was my favorite dish. Though. We cooked a lot of that, and it went from from chicken to meatloaf to short ribs to you know. Some other steak and when when you get to select anything you want to eat from your restaurant, what's your favorite? That's hard. <laughs> I think maybe peach cobbler. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so you you still have the signature pe peach cobbler. Yeah, I make peach cobbler just about every day. Mm -hmm. And we have a question here about bowly beans. What are bowly beans? Pinto beans, and my daughter just decided she would call them bowly beans, but they're just pinto beans. <laughs> did you grow pinto beans on the farm? Yes, we did. We grew, grew beans, and then we grew uh, purple hull peas, which I love purple hull peas. And I used to peel so much of them, they just, thing is we get purple on the end, so I'm peeling them. And I don't know why, it seemed like the, I sometimes I wonder what was my sisters and them doing because it seemed like I was doing all the work. 
<laughs> you got to own the restaurant. <laughs> so that's okay. <laughs> How did you season your pintos, your bully beans? Oh, we seasoned them with uh, salt and sugar and a whole lot of love. Okay. <laughs> no fat back. No, no. no well, we, I used to put meat in them, but so many people now don't like meat in them. So now I don't put meat in them. I just cook them without the meat. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I but I love them with a big, big hunk of uh, skin in them, okay. pork skin in them. Mm -hmm. We make ours with ham hock. Yeah, mm -hmm. we do that too and make ham hock and cabbage, yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which we don't sell at the restaurant now, but we should, ham hock and cabbage. Mm -hmm. We had a we had a event at the uh, arts. Arts, they invite us every year to come down to the arts place. And one year we took ham hock and cabbage. The arts festival. And those people just went crazy over those ham hock and cabbage. <laughs> I'm sure. It's not something you see every day on a menu, um, so. Yeah, so they probably loved it. And it's good. Your 50 year anniversary was this year? For the restaurant? How did you, how did you sell? Not 50, 50 years in this building. 50 years in that building. So did you all do anything special to celebrate? No, I really don't remember us doing anything special. But why didn't we do something special that day? Because uh, <laughs> it's, it's near your birthday. And it was just, it was too much. We tried to do it um, like on the first Saturday, but it was just too, it was too much. Oh, okay. Her, her well, birthday this, this is in March. This will be part of your 50 year celebration. Okay. That you <laughs> did okay. this interview. Mm -hmm. um, what are some of your famous clientele that have been to the restaurant? Oh, Kanye West. Oh. And uh, he had to disguise himself. It hasn't been that long ago anyway, but he disguised himself with a hood and everything on because our cousin that brought him here that teaches at this oh. school at, uh, at uh, Millwood, she had brought him and uh, then I had a, uh, what's the ball, football, the basketball? Russell Westbrook? No, mm -hmm. no, I don't know why. Kevin we, Durant. Oh, no, mm -hmm. we never had any of those. I don't know that man's name. His name he's, he's been traded. He got traded a few years his ago. Name oh, James. A, um, no, James he was a Harden. Bit tall. No, he was, a, let me see what I his have name is. I of him, but I don't know what his name is. Oh. I'm trying to think of his name, but my brain's gone. <laughs> Toby Keith. Toby Keith, yes, oh. Toby Keith's cousin to see us, and uh, we've had a lot of celebrities. Um, the guy out. that owns the, the, the OU player that now owns all of the um, barbecue restaurants. Oh, Billy, Billy Sam. Bill, okay, mm -hmm. okay. Barry yeah. Fallon. Yeah, mm -hmm. she came in anyway. Several times. And uh, the current mayor. Yeah, the mayor. The former mayor. The mayor of the our current mayor and then uh, the uh, the city the city man before him before uh, um, the 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 previous mayor whose name I can't say mm -hmm. and we we had a whole lot of celebrities and I have pictures of them pictures with them most of them so mm -hmm. Toby Keith came in did he did he talk to you about recipes since he owns a no. restaurant now? Okay. No, he came in and he said, I wanted that. I, I, we didn't have greens that day. And he said, next time I come, I want you to have some greens. <laughs> <laughs> I can see that. And he came back and he went over and I said, you're, he said, yes, I'm Toby. <laughs> <laughs> He's got that great voice. Uh, yeah. He had no one by his voice before. He, he comes in every once in a while now. Really? Mm-hmm. That's, that's back a, up. So when did you actually start your restaurant? What year? And uh, or not, I, as far as I can tell, we tried to go back and find out the exact time, but as far as I can tell, it was 1952 uh, in April. And then what street was it on at that point? On 4th Street. Okay. 900 block on 4th Street, 916. Okay, and then, mm -hmm. so it's where you are now, it's your second? Location? Oh no, we moved several times down on Fourth Street. We moved from the 916 place to a, a place next door that the was jewel, larger. It was next door to the Jewel Theater. And okay. then uh, New Clint Newton, he got jealous because he wanted me to do a lot of things that I wouldn't do. 
listed at her. <laughs> and so I, I, had, I moved across the street to another building that uh, Dr. Moon owned, the dentist. Oh, the, yes. right, F.D. Uh -huh. Moon. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. okay. And from there, uh, the urban door came in and was going to take over that building. Okay. And so that's when we moved to the current place that we are now. Okay, and so you've been there since 1969. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's a pretty, go pretty good long run in one place. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. um, has, the, has, the, wait, just a minute. has the neighborhood changed much in those 50 years? Yes, it has, because uh, when we first moved over there, it was quite a few places down the street and around, but across directly across the street from us was a had been a lumber, a lumber right. place, and it had burnt down. And uh, after we had been there a while, someone bought it and put in a church's chicken. And I said, oh, I'm going to burn that place down. <laughs> <laughs> but you didn't have to. <laughs> I didn't have to because all the people that worked there came to eat with us. <laughs> So it was a good thing for me. It was a good there. thing for me. Well, I've had both. Your your chicken is much better than churches. Mm -hmm. Did did you have any traditions around the dinner table that you all find that you still do now that are outside of the we, restaurant? We don't do it now because the, the family, but all of the we when we we all sit down to dinner, all five of us. All of us had a verse to say before dinner. Which I miss. We don't do that now. And I remember mine was remember Lot's wife. And I used to say, "What Lot's wife?" <laughs> Until I read it, read up on it, and everything. Mm -hmm. And my my sister was Jesus well, my youngest sister. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that one was mine. Um, could you tell us what it was like to be? I heard you were in a parade not too long ago. Could you tell us oh, about that was, experience? It was, uh, it was really wonderful and something that I thought would never happen. I was in the parade in Bowie, Oklahoma, where I was born. And I just really couldn't believe it. So how, how did they contact you? What did you have to do? I don't know. They came up from, a lady came up from Bowie and asked if I would be the, uh, Grand Marshal. Grand Marshal. And of course, I was there trying to wave and be cute in the car. We <laughs> <laughs> so excited. For the rodeo parade or the rodeo? rodeo. Yeah, it was, was the rodeo. rodeo. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So do you, do you, did you go to the rodeo too? Or? No, I didn't. I tell you, it's true, I've never been to the Boulder Rodeo. But my, uh, I guess my brothers and my brothers and I went, but I never went there. The only thing I can remember my little used to go to in Bodie was once a year they would bring the fair there. Mm -hmm. And we would go to the fair in the wagon. Can you tell us some of those experiences at the fair? What was your favorite part about the fair? Oh, I don't really remember. I was a little bit just the excitement of the lights and the candy and stuff all around the fair. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know how old I was then. I was small. Then you know. I can remember when uh, we used to go, what we call, we would go to town every once in a while. And my mom would, wouldn't let us wear our shoes. We'd have to walk barefoot until we get almost to town. And then she would have a towel to clean up our, and we'd put our shoes on them, but we would look good. And my mother was, uh, she ironed so good, she had made her own starch. And our dresses was always starched and pretty. And uh, uh, one lady says, how on earth did she get those dresses like that? <laughs> <laughs> did, did you learn how to do that? Yes, I did. I learned how to make the starch and, and iron, which I don't care too much for now. <laughs> and, and that was before electric irons. Yes, we had the big iron that you sit on the stove when it get hot, and then you iron. You sit it back on the stove, it get hot, and you iron. Mm -hmm. When did you stop making your own starch and start using the faultless? <laughs> I don't remember. Uh, 
long time ago. <laughs> you know, I love that idea that I didn't have to make the starch. But it's not near about as good now. I can't make my stuff get stiff like it was when I was making my own starch. And I thought about making some not too long ago. <laughs> it's just like you miss the garden and mm -hmm. the things that you do yourself. Well, while we're talking about town, can you describe Bowley to us when you were a youngster before oh, you moved it, away? Yeah, it was a, the one was, I remember a hamburger place that we would go to right on the corner that had good hamburgers and uh, True Love. Uh, True Love, yeah, I believe it was. And then, uh, of course, they had the bank and they had uh, cotton gins down at the far end of the, which is not, it's not anything there where they cotton with them, but weeds and trees. And, do, you uh, remember, do you remember the bank robbery? No, I don't. I don't remember the bank robbery. I was, uh, I guess I was too little. I was in. It was, it would have been before you were born. Did they talk about it in school though? Yeah, they did talk about it. My dad talked about it. And then I remember that they, they had a terrible tornado down there close to Bowie one time. And I remember we was outdoors playing and my daddy saw the cloud and he said, oh, that's going to be a bad storm. And it did hit Bowley, but it didn't hit where we lived. And, uh, he went to, to try to help where the storm had hit. Right. Who, who are the people in Bowley that you remember the best? Well, other than Mrs. Hill and Mr. Hill that passed away, and he passed away, and she wore a dress. I would say it was the same dress, but a black dress with a white collar for a solid year. She mourned him for a solid year. She wore that dress. And I was a very big girl then. I can remember that. And then there was uh, the oranges. The oranges. And uh, I think two of them were teachers. And Miss Vondren. And oh, I can remember Miss Vondren real good because her and my sister didn't get along. <laughs> why, why did you don't tell him? that huh? oh yeah tell that that's a good story I don't know what my at that time teachers had pets <laughs> if he was cute and I don't know but anyway teachers had pets and for some reason why uh, my sister was not her one of her favorites and I don't know she did something to my sister and my sister jumped on her and wore her out. <laughs> and of course, my daddy was going to, uh, he was talking about how he was going to get my sister when she uh, got home. But my sister had already planned to slip away before then because she, I guess she had got tired of being the, the lady of the house. My mom had moved to the city to the city and uh, she had packed all of her clothes and she had told me, she said, Florence, I'm going to move, I'm going. At that time, the mailman, it was a man that brought the mail to Bodie in a car every day. And when you wanted to go to the city, you could pay him $2 and you could ride from him with him to the city. So she had saved up her $2 and she had got her clothes and cut them down to, in a little ditch down there in a box. And she was coming to the city to my mom. And that she had had, they had that fight. And my daddy was waiting on my sister to come home. She didn't tell nobody but me because I had a, my sister would tell everything. My baby sister would tell everything. So she, my daddy was waiting on her to come home where he could wear her out because uh, they had had it. But anyway. He waited around me and it got dark and everything. So I finally had to tell him she's not coming. Wow. He said, well, how do you know she's not coming? Well, I couldn't tell him she had told me. So I said, all her clothes is gone. <laughs> <laughs> Good save. So, mm -hmm. so 
Good save. Mm -hmm. do, do you have any connections to anyone in Bowley now? No, when I go down there, I don't know anybody. I did know a little girl that we went to school named, named Mary Hooks, but uh, she, I think she passed away. And then my mom had a, well, my mom and her mother was good friends. And when we go down there, my mom would go and see her. But I don't know, I don't, I don't, I don't know a soul in Bowley now. I know some people now in Bowley, like the mayor and the city council lady and stuff like that. But then the one that got me to be in the parade, but I didn't. I don't. I don't know anybody that lived down there at the time I was there, and my my dad and everything. Of course, I was in Bowley a lot after I got older because my dad stayed on down there, and he lived to be a hundred and five. And when he'd go to, when someone would pass, we'd have to take him to the funeral down there and stuff like that, you know. So. How, how has the town changed? Oh, it's nothing now. At that time, it was a town. But now it's just, a, I don't know, it's like a shell. And the, the buildings on the main street is too down. They tell me that the older people don't want to fix it up and do nothing, you know. And I notice here, my daughter loves down there. And she's talking about doing this and that and down there, and I'm saying, you're doing enough already. <laughs> mm -hmm. Were the streets paved or dirt when you were younger? Well, they had a, uh, a little paved, a little paved, a little uh -huh. paved now. About, about as much as they do now. Well, I don't know, I don't think they're paved anything. And it had but a, they did put a nice park down there, I believe, there I went down. And it had a cotton gin? Did it have an I, ice plant? Ice? An ice plant? No, I don't remember ice plant, but I do remember we got ice from somewhere, and I don't remember where, because we would have, we had an ice box. I don't know if you all know about ice box, and you'd have to put this solid chunk of ice in it, like this. And you put it in there, and it would keep the ice box cold all the time. And of course, we wanted to chip off the ice, and we wasn't allowed to do that because mm -hmm. we have to have the ice to keep the box cold. Mm -hmm. um, and we had a, a smokehouse. Ooh, I love that smokehouse because we'd kill hogs and cows, and they would. I smoked the meat in the smokehouse, and that was the best ham I ever had in my life. And my mom made the best sausage, and I wish I had that recipe. Do, do you make your own sausage? No, I don't. Oh, okay. But she did. She made, I can remember her making them after we moved to the city. And she would make link sausage and put them in the, the guts, mm -hmm. you know, and make them like. I, do not. I, I just really wish I had, I didn't have enough sense, I guess, to get those recipes and things, although I followed her around and I got a lot of it. She made the best ice cream. Mm. Do, do you make ice cream? No, now? I don't. Oh, okay. <laughs> no. Well, they were probably all in her head. They probably weren't written mm. down anyway. Well, I, I can remember kind of how she made the ice cream, but it was kind of like some things I do now. I don't have a recipe, but I make it, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> do you do you ever find any of your assistants, um, any of the people who work around you, trying to write down your recipes? No, I have to tell them everything to do. <laughs> <laughs> the guy we have do now, he is doing very well. But at the time he started there, he didn't know. He had worked at like Remington Park and some more big places. But I told him, you you didn't know how to do nothing but just open the bag and put it in there in the pot. Mm -hmm. Now he knows how to uh, like season the chicken and what you put in the something and this and that and other. But at the time I thought you didn't know nothing. The kind of the kind of the kind of cook he was was the kind that you open the package and heat it up and that was it. Like a lot of the big places do I guess. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everything's pre packaged. Mm -hmm. Do you have a favorite memory from Bowley? My favorite memory, I guess, would be me and my sister playing in the backyard and making mud pies in the backyard by the back door. Killing chickens. 
while your parents were gone? And then we would, uh, when my parents would go to uh, town, like on the weekends, like what y'all call party, they would go to town. To, and when they would leave, we'd party. <laughs> oh my, we had so many chickens and we could kill chickens and they'd never miss them. So we would kill uh, my older sister and my, uh, they would kill two chickens, get the card table out and get the cards out and we would play cards and eat chicken. And my sister, which was a tell-all, we said, now we're gonna give you all the drumsticks and you, but you can, don't, you can't tell. And once you get, mama, they killed your chickens. <laughs> when they, when she, she would tell it after she got back. <laughs> but my mom was real good. Now my daddy would probably have a fit, but my mom would say, well, that's okay. Mm -hmm. So drumsticks were the piece of choice? Well, we thought we gave her the drumstick. Yeah, you know, the kids love drumsticks. We thought she wouldn't tell if we gave her the drumsticks, but she would tell. So you knew how to cut one up that early? Yes. Mm -hmm. My sister, my oldest sister did, and I did. I could cut up a chicken, I could pick a chicken and all that, but I never could wring a chicken's neck. And my mama could take her and just boom! And that chicken would land on the ground kicking with the neck broke. But I never could do that. It was two things I never could learn to do in the on the farm. I was little though, you know. I couldn't milk a cow and I couldn't kill the chickens. So you all had cows as well? Yeah, we had cows and horses and we had a lot of uh, cows because every time a, a cow would have a calf, she would give it to one of us. Where all of all the kids had a cow and a so I said, this cow and this calf is going to be yours, you know, and everything. And when we were, I don't know, we had, I had one that was kind of funky, funny looking called a Jersey cow. But in a way, after a long time that we had, oh, well, I guess we had maybe two cows a piece, or all five of us or something. And my mom tried to get my daddy to sell all the cows except two and buy the land we was on. Mm -hmm. But my daddy wouldn't do that. And I don't know why he didn't do that. Because mm -hmm. the farm is worth, that place is worth a fortune now, I imagine. Mm -hmm. Did you name your cow? No, I can't remember naming my cow. But I do remember the, it was the spring where we got the water from and they'd have a big barrel off in the, in the land, in the, Earth, and it that it would just bubbled up water all the time, and that was the coldest. It was just like ice water. It was bubbling up, and of course they had a little stream over by it. And my mama said, "Why I'm such a busybody now is because when she was carrying me, she went down there. And there was a little green snake down there, and she killed it. It was just wiggling, and she killed it. And she said that she always. I've, I've always been." very active. And she said that she bored me with that by that killing that snake at the time. Oh, that's interesting. So so you're um so do you all have property in Bowley now? Yeah, we don't. Okay. Because my daddy wouldn't buy that land. She told him to buy. But he did buy some uh, a place in Bowley after we moved away to Bowler little section, but he sold it. They built whoever was next to him bought built a house partner on it and he went on and sold it. Now he sold it because we have nothing down there now. I don't have anything down there but the memory. So how far would you have to walk to school? Well, I would have to walk a long way to school, but we caught the bus. The bus would come around and the and if we missed the bus we have to go through the field and walk a long ways to get to the school, which I imagine was about maybe two or, two or three miles. Was the elementary, was it Bowley Elementary or was it another? Well, they just had, the, it was the one school and it was all together. It was like the 12. elementary and the high school. And one. One building. Mm -hmm. okay. did, did you have neighbors? Did you have other kids that you got to walk with? No, well, we had neighbors, but I didn't, we didn't have, they didn't have any kids evidently that were close to us. 
Was music an important part of growing up? Well, I can't re remember us having too much music. We, when we got a radio, it was wonderful. When we finally got a radio and everybody in the neighborhood would come to our house. At the time, Joe Lewis was going to fight, but they could hear the fight on our radio. We'd have people sitting all around when Joe Lewis was fighting. And his, his first wife was from Muskie County. Yeah. Um, yeah. A lot of people don't know. Mm -hmm. um, do you remember anything about your neighbors, though? Oh, yeah, I remember we had one lady named Miss Carr that I hated because she caused, caused me to get a whooping for nothing. Because I was my mom, my daddy's pick, and nobody could mess with me, everything that happened was, uh, I was blamed for it. You know what, like if a dish got broke in the kitchen, and my sister had broken. Well, when it got to the thing, it was I that did it. And because I wasn't going to, they knew that I wasn't going to get punished for it because my daddy wasn't going to let them do it, so they would put everything on me. But that lady named Miss Carr told my mom to uh, whoop one of her kids and make them go out and plant the garden, the pepper and stuff in the garden. And I'd had, they'd have the best garden. And my mama grabbed me one day and just started whooping me, and I didn't know what she was whooping me for. <laughs> and Miss Carr had told her to uh, make me do that and make me go plant the pepper. Why? Why they feel that they had to whip you to do it? Why I don't just... know that you know that I don't know why she had that, <laughs> but I hated that woman after that. When I found out why, I got the whooping. Of course, my mama got a good jacking up about it afterward. <laughs> Did you? Do you ever? Do you ever miss living in the country, or do you just prefer living in the city? I miss it, but I prefer living in the city. <laughs> what What do you miss about it the most? Oh, I miss uh, being able to grow out my own food, our own food, and. Uh, go out at night without having to be, I'm not scary, but having to worry about having to, about me having to grab somebody and beat them up or something. Because <laughs> I'm a country girl and I don't think I'm gonna let you get me. <laughs> I still think I can take you. And I had a, I had a, when I used to fight, you know, kids, I was, I was very mean. I was the mean one in my family. And That's I remember, why you had to plant the pepper. Yeah. <laughs> the woman said, get your yeah. mom's child. Uh-huh. Well, anyway, I hated her from the time till she died. But anyway, <laughs> I <laughs> I would go to, when I was going to school, and we was so waiting on the bus, and we had these neighbors. It was two guys, and they were so, Oh, they were picking on me, and uh, they had this thing about, you better not knock this chip off my shoulder. I'll get you if you knock this chip off my shoulder. When they was wrong, do you remember anything about that? But anyway, he was messing with me, and I I knocked him and the chip and everything. <laughs> I beat him up real good. Why, they, no one ever bothered me after that. Like, it's like you, it's like the gangbusters get you. Get your bluff in first. Mm -hmm. I had no problem after that. Was, was that a characteristic of your father? Who who had you learned that from? I don't know. I think I was just mean. I don't know. Cause uh, <laughs> you say mean. We we say self preservation. Yeah. <laughs> you had mm -hmm. you had to. Mm -hmm. You had to take care. Of I was so, but I was so quiet, and I wouldn't say nothing to nobody. But if you mess with me, you had just messed up. Do you still have a lot of friends? Once you moved from Bowley to Oklahoma City, did you have a lot of friends from Bowley that no, were here? No, I didn't. I had one, one girl named Juanita Curry. That was my friend from Bowley. Mm -hmm. And then I had another girlfriend, but her name was Emma. And I thought, you know, I guess they all passed away now. 
When you when you moved into the Douglas School District, did you have trouble adjusting? Were the, did they accept you pretty I did. easily? I had trouble adjusting because at that time they went, we went to one room, and at that time they moved from room to room. We had history here and uh, English there, spelling up, you know, room to room. And at the when we went boldly, we were just in one room, and so uh, we didn't move from. Room to room to room to room, like we did, and uh, and Bodie. Did the students uh, accept you pretty well? No, I mean I guess they didn't. It was kind of like I was a little country girl, mm -hmm. but, you know, and I I think I had about three or four that accepted me, and we went to lunch together and stuff like that. But no, I was a little. Black sheep from Bowie. Mm -hmm. Really? Mm -hmm. um, and it's a funny thing now. I see some of I I used to see some of them, and I tell they come they come and hi Florence and everything. And I told my daughter, she, I said they wouldn't speak to me when I was. Uh, mm -hmm. And she said, Oh, Mama, you just so mean. You just she says, but I'm sitting there. Says, they didn't when I they didn't know me when they didn't know me when I was. Uh, you know, yeah. Mm -hmm. When you were all in school together, up. you know. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have to beat anybody up? No, after no, okay. I didn't have to beat nobody up after I got to Oklahoma City. Mm -hmm. Did you have a favorite class or teacher at Douglas? Yes, I had a well, uh, my uh, my cooking teacher, Miss 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 Love, okay. that I told you, my, mm -hmm. and she would. Uh, like they were, I don't know if she was gonna have a party or something at her house or something that night or at somewhere, and she would fix stuff for them, and she'd always get me to. I was the one that would, she would get to help her do it, like cut up the, the chicken for the chicken salad they were gonna have that night or something. So you mm -hmm. you learned some of her cooking secrets. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Not really. I yeah, I guess so because I learned how to I just to do the things that you know, ordinary things. Do you do you still serve chicken salad? I still make it every once in a while. Not we don't serve it in the restaurant. Oh, but okay. I make it, and I made some not too long ago, and the help just went crazy over it and everything. Mm -hmm. What do you put in yours? Oh, pickled and mayonnaise and very small diced. Onion, a little celery, a miracle whip, and mix it up in a little. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. How, how do you do your chicken? Fried do you, chicken. Do you boil it? I mean, that you used to make your chicken oh, salad. Oh, yeah, we boil it. You boil it. it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to try that. Mm -hmm. um, do you remember visiting any of the neighboring towns to Bowley, like Payton or Okima? Uh, I can't ever remember going to Okima when I was young. And I, Peyton, I remember my mom would send the eggs and the butter to Peyton by my brothers to sell. And uh, we would go, like in the summertime, we would go to, uh, my my mom had a brother that lived in a place where we went and had the, uh, Caught the fish. Uh, I can't remember. We jumped you. We jumped you. No. Um, uh, Tunka, Walika, Holdenville. 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 Okay. And every summer, my mom would let me and my sister go down there for like for a vacation, like and stay a week with with her, her brother and his wife, and they had. They had what five children, five or six children, and we'd go down there and play with them. Mm -hmm. Very neat, very neat. Do you um, remember any major events in the world that happened while you were living in Bowley and how your family dealt with them? I know you were there during World War II. Do you remember? I don't that? remember that. I do remember. But I was here in Oklahoma City. I was in class when the war ended, when they dropped the bomb and the war ended. Because my brother, my oldest brother, hadn't been too long, went to service. 
he went to the Navy. And I was concerned about him being in the Navy, and I was so glad that they had. The war is ending, my brother's okay now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was, I don't know. Do you remember the Dust Bowl, or was that before you? I don't remember that. Yeah, the mm -hmm. Dust Bowl, she mm -hmm. would have been a baby. Yeah. Yeah. So, so um, the newspaper did a interview with my grandfather, and he said the, the Dust Bowl was worse than the Depression. And because Bowley was a black town, he said, I don't know how, how Florence was the first time she saw a white person. Do you know? Do you remember the first time you saw a white person? No, I don't. I remember the first time I saw her airplane. I was a little girl in the car, and I looked up, and I saw the airplane in the sky. Mm -hmm. And I swear it seemed, I don't believe it, but it seemed like he was running me. I was trying to get away from the airplane. You know? <laughs> Was it a crop duster or yeah. was it? It was a, I guess it, oh. and, it, and I, they laughed at me about that because I was trying to run away from the airplane and go hide. I didn't know. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, what do you see as the impact of segregation and integration on the town of Bowley? I don't know. It, it seems as that it's not a Negro town now. It seems as though. The uh, other people have taken it over. Some not the Mennonites or some other. But well, anyway, it seems like it's it's not a black town anymore. Cause mm -hmm. Because I had said when I went to Lotto, and I'm going back there. I'm down there and buy the property where I was <laughs> where I was born <laughs> and where they have that good spring and the water I was talking about. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's from it's. They get um, sweet potatoes that are actually sweet. Sweet, sweet, yeah. yeah. And raise me some in the country. And and make yeah. more yam fried chicken. <laughs> yeah. Right. Oh, that's right. We did have that when we were there. Um, how did you learn about um, the Tulsa race riot? Did they teach it to you in school, or was it uh, something you I'll, just? Well, well they, I, I heard they taught. Her, I guess they taught me in school about it because I didn't know anything much about the Tulsa race. We used to ride, but uh, they always said that my sis, my mom, my uh, my mom, my dad, sister, was married to one of the guys that really started that race track. Really? They claimed that they really started it. Mm -hmm. That he did. He was in the in the elevator or something that, and uh, something happened. And uh, my uh, ALC, the one that, well, his uh. Her husband, Lede, mm -hmm. Elsa Lede, mm -hmm. that she, it, but he, well, I don't know whether he started it, but he was there at the time when they. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, they the did they teach you about the Bowley Bank robbery in school, or was it just something you it heard just about? Just something my dad, and mom used to talk about it. So they were living there when that happened. Yes, they were living there when they had. Did my grandfather mm -hmm. go to fight? I don't know. I don't remember. But they tell me that they came out with guns and knives, and when they come there, pitchforks, pitchforks, and everything. To, when they came to rob that bank, mm -hmm. that is that's cool. Though. So, what do you see as like the major turning points in your town, Bowie? Mm -hmm. It's gonna need a whole lot. A whole lot, but it seems like to me that someone is trying to help now. But the lady have put the the uh, part down there. We went down there at the time at the when they dedicated it not too long ago, and it was lots of people there. And uh, Langston had three buses there with the the choir band and the band, and, uh, everything mm -hmm. there, and uh, but. Some of those old older people like me, they won't turn the land or the the, the, the land on Main Street loose and won't help. Can't be like me. I just want to hold on to everything I got. So okay, I guess it's natural. I don't know, but anyway, it needs a whole lot. What do you, What do you think keeps people so connected to Bowie? I don't know, but I tell you what, they go back there when they have something. They get back down there. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember before the, before I was the uh, 
grand marshal of the parade, we, they had had, was going to have a rodeo down there, and we wanted to go back down there and sell food on the street. I mean, on, and, and none of the old people would let us have none of the buildings. And I but had. They didn't have it, the one. I had. There's only two, and one of them was. I had this thing in my mind, you know, this in my mind. Hometown girl comes back to Bowley, you know, and we didn't. That didn't happen. <laughs> we couldn't find. We couldn't get a place down there. To. And you left there when you were about twelve. Twelve. I guess. Yeah, I guess 12. I was about eleven or twelve. Mm -hmm. So were you there when I forty was? I was thinking when I forty came in, and that that started impacting people leaving, being able to leave Bowley more. I don't remember. I'm not sure when they built up I don't, either. I don't remember. That made access easy. When people left Bali, were they, they left, did they leave to go to California to? My people? Mm -hmm. Like people in Bali, they left to go to California to, you know, pig no, grapes? I don't, and, no, no, I didn't have to, no. I just had my, my mother, my mother's sister passed away early and she had two children that was left. You know, and I remember my mother kept, I guess they passed them around because I remember my mother kept them. And uh, her husband that had passed away before her had people that was in California. Now how they got to California from Vernon or wherever it was, I don't know how. But anyway, she sent for them to come to California. Mildred, Mildred and Audra. Yeah, but your mother's sisters and brothers all moved to California, most of Well, them. they moved after a... But did they go because they thought it was going to be more opportunities? Mm -hmm. they, more they opportunities. They... I remember my mother's old, uh, youngest brother, Uncle Oscar, that loved her so much, came to Bowley before he left to go to California and said, Lizzie, I'm going to move to California. And he did. He settled in, in San Diego. When, mm -hmm. when you watch The Grapes of Wrath, it's really the the black story, especially for that part of the world. Right. Mm -hmm. When I watch that movie, I cry. And he yeah. he uh, yeah. he would send her something every year from 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 California, every year. And it got where he would send her uh, boxes of fruit and stuff from California. And I don't know where that little bluebird is that she kept that he sent her from California. He would send her something. He was crazy about his. His sister, because he would send her something every year. So, how many brothers and sisters did she have? Oh, ten. Oh, yeah, about ten. About yeah. ten. Uh huh. Uh, ten. I can only remember. I can't. Remember. Well, it was only uh, two, two, three girls. But it was the rest of them were born. Mm -hmm. And about your father, how many brothers and sisters did he have? Five. Yeah. Did they all live to be a hundred? Like no, 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 no. I don't think so. Close, close, but not a hundred and five. He he would have been a he that one month he died one month from the day that he would have been a hundred and five. What do you think was his secret to living that long? Did he do something right? I don't know. He loved, he loved, that well water. He loved, he loved women. I don't know because he loved women. Oh, he loved and he women. slept a lot. He believed in resting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, but what had he done for a living? Farm? Yeah, he farmed up Was until he, he moved to Oklahoma City. After he moved to Oklahoma City, he worked for FAA, which I guess is, what is it now? The FAA, and he was a, he got all kind of awards out there. I, from, from but did there. he move back to Bowley after he retired? No. Oh, he stayed in Oklahoma City. He stayed with Oklahoma City with me. Oh. And that was the apple of his eye right there, too. Yeah. That's why he lived to be oh, 105. He, he lived with us from the time she was two, two until he passed away. Well, what was the favorite, his favorite thing that you you cooked? What did your dad like the most? I don't know. My dad was just country. He would get up and say, I'm going to let you cook me some fat meat and an egg. <laughs> he loved that. 
So he so ate he, eggs till he was 100. He sour. All That's those raw. Me. He ate everything they tell you is bad to eat now. White bread. And uh, if you had a glass of water and you was through with it, he didn't mind drinking it. And he would pick up people's water in the place, what we have now, when they got through and drank out of it and everything. And people, I see now people talking about, oh, that's German and everything. And he did everything that Just probably had they say you don't do now. Yeah. And he lived to be 105. And he never, he never punished you for anything? Nothing. He, he knew he Nothing. was going to live with you at some point. <laughs> Nothing. So he got his influence in her. Nothing. I couldn't do no wrong. Well, was was right. church an important part of growing up? Did you go to? Well, we were well, we lived in the country, so we didn't get to go to church a lot. But we went to, uh, you know how they have these uh, tents in the country where they come and they have church. Kind of like a revival. Yes, and we would whenever it was one in the neighborhood or in the vicinity, we would always go there and and they would be holding us and they would be shouting and going on and oh, I like that. Mm -hmm. Do you go to that kind of church now? No, I go, no. I go, I, I joined Fifth Street Baptist Church after I was a teenager and I very seldom go there now because it's not the same as it was when I was and at what point did you get married? Oh, I got married when I was old. <laughs> I was, I was old. I was, a, I believe I was 28 or 29 or something like that. That's old. When I got <laughs> old. I, oh, how did you meet him? He came in the restaurant, him and his two brothers, and they decided they would each one of them picked out the sister they wanted to take out. Oh. It was two of them. Well, one picked my sister and he picked me. And from there, it kind of blossomed. <laughs> well, did, did you he both had, sisters marry? Did you marry the brothers? Did your sister no, marry? No, my brother, my sister only went out with that one once or twice, okay. and that was all. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> Did, did he ask your father for permission to marry you? No. No. No, he did. You were In fact, when we stepped off and got married. <laughs> I guess then, did your father like him? Because I guess so, because he lived there with us okay. after we got after I got married. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, what do you think people should know about Bowley going forward? I don't know. They should well at one time that it was a, a thriving town. At one time it was a thriving town and now I wonder how did it get to this point? You know, how did it go down so so far? I don't understand it, but it's just like I said when uh, they said after the war people started leaving going to they had went to Broadway and saw the lights. And they wanted to get. <laughs> they wanted to get out of there, I guess, because sometime I look at it now from what it used to be when I was a little girl, and it just don't seem like the same place. How how would you like to be remembered? As a mean old woman. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Everybody seems to like me, and I. Everybody seems to like me, and I guess I would like to be remembered as a decent person. And uh, I have people now that bring to me. They used to bring me lots of gifts, and I still have people that bring me gifts and things. And my daughter used to storm away and all that stuff. Yes, at one time she broke them. <laughs> <laughs> broke something somebody brought me. Anyway, I have some things that I have lots of things that people gave me. And then they, they used to send me flowers and roses and things. But how 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 much longer do you think you'll be having Florence's restaurant? Like for the next ten years, what do you see? Oh, I don't know. I think I probably would be I have already got out of there if it hadn't been for her. Because 
I don't know, I just can't do what I used to do, and it bothers me that I can't do what I used to do. Like, I used to wait tables and cook it and wash dishes all at the same time, you know, and now I can't do that. And I'm kind of like my brother and I. We've been, you've been, you've been used to doing that. It bothers you that you can't do it anymore. Mm -hmm. but, but you're like the director. Mm -hmm. So you're still very much needed. Oh yeah, I, I, I do. I, I I do most of the cooking now. So <laughs> it's quality control. All right. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. right. Most of the cooking you, I see you the chicken the and cut up the chicken and. But I'm gonna have to let some of that go. So about how early do you start your day? Do when she leaves to work at uh, ten o'clock, and I stay there all day long until seven. So you do 12-hour days regularly? <laughs> well, we close at 5.30, we leave at 6. No, you don't know, use 6.30 or 7. Mm -hmm. I'm still washing pots and pans. <laughs> because you move everybody else out the way. No, I don't. I know I don't. I don't you. know I don't. Yeah, But yeah, I'm yeah. going to start to let them do it. I'm going to, I'm going to, that time of day, I'm going to leave. Well, and when, see who's gonna do it then. Well, when you're not working, what do you do for fun? To really look at television. Oh, okay. I love looking at television. I love uh, those those uh, mystery movies. And as my brother can say, I like a high class western. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and anything that has ball. Oh, I love I love to look at sports too. I like uh, not baseball, but I like uh, all the rest of them. Football, basketball. Yeah, look at the favorite team. Well, my tape favorite team was the Warriors, and they still is, although they're they're not doing good this year because <coughs> all of the people is hurt, and then Curry just got his hand broke, mm -hmm. so they're not winning any games. But this year, it's a, are they still my team? Okay. Mm -hmm. But you switched from you switched to them. It used to be L.A. So why'd you why'd you well leave the well Kobe was my son, but they <laughs> he quit he quit uh and he then, retired. So he quit and then you he had, retired. He, gave birth to Curry. he retired and they did something I didn't <laughs> like. So so he quit. Then you gave birth to Curry. So now the Warriors are your team in football because you watch all the balls football. Oh, who is my team now? Football is uh, uh, Seattle. But right now, I, I, I pull for Baker Mayfield and uh, uh, that other guy that, he can't run me. I run fast as a, uh, um, uh, uh, the one that he just left last year. The, the, yeah. The I, I, pull, the I always pull for them. Kyler Murray. Kyler Murray. I always pull for them. And then I like Kansas City. They call the quarterback in Kansas City. Mm -hmm. Now you just said the wrong thing. You said you don't watch baseball. Baseball? I don't watch baseball I very know, much. I shouldn't have said that because that's, that's the one sport that you actually have a connection to. Yeah, but I still don't. I still it's slow. It's a lot. It's it moves too slowly. I, uh, it's a lot. I, I don't. I don't. Uh, well, well, did you play sports in high school? No, or I, I, no, no. Did, did you I go had, to sports? Did you go watch no, sports? Okay. No, I had two deaf feet, and I never could dance. Huh. I know. Mm -mm. Well, how, how did you get interested in watching it then? I think because uh, I don't know. I just started liking uh Well, when I was a uh, a teenager, my one of my first jobs was, was the cashier in a grocery store, and uh, they uh, they always, well, they they liked uh, baseball, mm -hmm. and they would be talking about baseball and stuff. But I would be more interested in other things. But oh, it's it was too slow for me. Mm -hmm. I knew Bowley had done really well in basketball right. through the mm -hmm. through the years. So I thought maybe you followed them. Got, got an interest by watching them. Mm -mm. Yeah. Mm -mm. And the Bowley Bears were known statewide. Did Bowley have a a, mu a, a movie theater when you were? They younger? did. They yeah. did. But I, I, I didn't have, I, I guess I was too little. Where on the street would it have it, been? It was on Main Street. On Main Street. 
uh, what they call Main Street there somewhere, but I didn't ever go to it. I think my brother probably went once or twice, but I never, I was too little. They didn't, at that time, girls just did get out by themselves. Mm -hmm. So you said when you were young, you thought you were going to be a movie star, so is that what Oh, you I did. I said, well, I was just, I when I was out there making up them mud pies and things, and I'd see the airplane, I said, oh, I'm going to be a movie star one of these days, you know, because uh, <laughs> you my my name is going to be up in lights, and, it and, and no, it's not. And <laughs> then uh, my, my aunt, my aunt, my mother's sister, Carrie, she lived in Okima. And she would bring us all kinds. Well, she'd bring us the magazines and the old newspapers that they she'd save all of that and bring them to us. And I, that's why I saw that. And I guess I saw some of the movie stars in the magazines and stuff. And well, I would say, "Oh, well, I'm going to be a movie star." But I guess every, I guess most girls, young girls, thought they were going to be a movie star at one time or something. Did you have a favorite movie star growing up? No, I didn't even know what they was. I just. <laughs> I just saw pictures. I don't even know who was famous then. <laughs> I was trying to think maybe Dorothy Dandridge would have been. Oh, I love uh, what's her name that wore hair all to one side. Uh, she would oh, wear hair uh, uh, all clipped to one side. I'm trying to think of a name. She was but a redhead. Uh -huh. I can't. I'm so I'm so old I can't even remember names now. I, re I remember I remember the movie she was in. Mm -hmm. It was gorgeous. She'd have her hair mm -hmm. all half her face would be covered up mm -hmm. with that hair. She's in that movie where she comes up and flips her hair back and mm -hmm. she's like playing piano or something. I know exactly who you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So did you try to do that with your hair? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Although I used to have my hair. I used to have good hair, but my thyroid messed up my hair, I guess. I don't know. And straightening it, trying to yeah, not have to, a kink. Yeah, I used to didn't. I used my mom. My mom used to didn't put a comb nowhere close to my hair. But anyway, I was I, out of the out of the three girls. I guess I had the, what they call good hair. What they used to call good hair. And she, uh, I cried because she. Well, you know, when you got three girls and you got to comb the hair every day before you go to school. Well, I was the one that she didn't have to do that to. So she took my hair one day and braided it in a braid and cut it off. And so all she had to do was do this, and I was all right. But I wanted her to, I wanted to keep my hair. So I said, oh, what is that man? Was my grandfather mad? Oh, no. Was... No. So she could comb my hair. She could just brush my hair down and put something on it. Did Next you ever, day she wouldn't did have you to come. press with the pressing comb, or did you actually use an iron? She, 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 I didn't. I didn't, you she didn't, didn't have to do anything to mine. Oh, okay. But I got a sister, my baby sister. She said, she told me not long ago, about a month or two ago. She said my poor hair always had had that hot iron. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. But my and my other, my oldest sister, she had pretty good hair, but she. she she went to cosmetology school, so she would get up every morning and do her own after she got older. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did she do, since you had so many sisters, did she do all of your hair or just her own? Just her own. Oh. <laughs> how, how old did your mother live to be, too? 97. Oh, wow. Well, you're, you're got, you got mm -hmm. good genes. You got some good genes. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, she passed when she was 97, and I can remember I was kind of upset about it, naturally. Mm -hmm. And my dad came and told me, he said, don't worry, you still have me. I know that was good. And mm -hmm. neither one of them remarried? Oh, my bad. My daddy re remarried five times, a so-called. No, he <laughs> did <No. laughs> <laughs> Not really. Not yeah. really, but I told you he was a woman's man. Okay. No, he didn't remarry. He married a... Ivory Orange, which was the principal of Bowley at one time. And uh, he married another woman named Saloni. That's the only way he did. Of course, I don't know which one of those, what wasn't, wasn't Ivory, but one of my sister tried to pull her out of the bed. But that's another story. <laughs> well, you already <laughs> we, went down, we went down to visit him on the weekend.
And we went out to the house, and this woman was in there in the bed. And, of course, when we went in, she covered herself up. And my sister tried to pull the cover off of her, but she wouldn't let go. She wouldn't let go. I don't know who that woman was. So my sister went out there to get something to get her, and she got out of there and ran across. <laughs> we, never did. We, never did. we never did know. And that's another reason why I left. I left Bowling and came to Oklahoma City. My daddy was having girls and women. I couldn't have that. So I said, well, I'm going on to my mom. Mm -hmm. And you came, you got there by riding with, no, that's not right. Your sister got to Oklahoma City with the postman, riding postman. with the mailman. I did too. You did too, okay. Mm -hmm. So you had to save your All two bucks to go to? Yeah, me and my sister, my, my baby sister Bo. Mm -hmm. Wow. But of course he knew we were coming there, you know. We didn't step off. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you told your father before you yeah, made he, your exit. He knew we were. <laughs> <laughs> Are you hearing things? Should we get on, on, on record here? Okay, I think that was the highlight. <laughs> <laughs> Although we can talk about your daughter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, she looks at you like, no, you can't. <laughs> no, it's Victoria, right? Uh -huh. How did you pick that name? Is there a story I, about uh, the name? A, a girl, a girl, well, she really, because she really named, called, named her Vicky, and I went from Vicky to Victoria, but she, uh, she, uh, was going with, uh, my, my husband's brother, and me and her were kind of close. She's going with Carl Franklin, and her, she loved to dance, and oh, she'd get in the mirror and dance, and, Remember, that's how you got to be Vicky, Victoria. Mm -hmm. Victoria Middle, what's the middle name? Renee. Victoria Renee. Oh, that's very pretty. pretty. And I don't know how we got Renee in there, but anyway, she Wait, named her. Is there anything else you want to say before we close off? I'm so glad you all came and, and we had this nice visit. Thank you. Because so I thought about things that I hadn't thought about in years. <laughs> well, if there's we anything else it. you want to say, I mean, we don't. We might not know to ask. Is there any other stories you want recorded? Not that I can think of at this time. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, thank you so much. We really appreciate you agreeing to visit with us. Thank you. It's been great. Thank you.